Oh, shit. You guys are here early. Um, welcome. New tutorial setup. Today we're doing a, a cinematography breakdown of my, my latest music video, Dollar Signs with Shiny Toy. Without further ado, let's dive on in. Go. Had a lot of niggas trying to go when I fall back. Had a lot of niggas trying to call back. Can't be no mistakes of what you call that, yeah. Never had no niggas trying to ride. Never had no niggas by my side when they all that. First and foremost, just want to talk about the song and the overall synopsis. It's called Dollar Signs. Um, the synopsis is essentially the artist Shani is telling her brother and trying to convey to him that you know he doesn't need to, to sell drugs, to be in the gang life, that it's okay to be patient, to take your time earning that money. Hence, hence the chorus, you know, take your time, the dollar signs. So that's that's the base synopsis. Now, talking about what we shot this on, we used two cameras for this project. Now, we mainly shot on my Ursa Mini Pro G2 4.6K, which we are using right now to shoot this tutorial. And our B cam was my um, Blackmagic Pocket 4K with the um, 0.64 Metabones adapter um, added onto that, so it's speed boosted as well. We used my Tamron 24 to 70 for about 80% of the video, and that also has a 1 uh, 1 4th Black Pro Mist on there. I've got it on there right now as well. As you can see, it's kind of softened up, giving a little better and creamier skin tones. You can see a little bit of pop with uh, you know the lights that the light that's coming through the window as well. So that is all a result of Black Pro Mist filter. If you don't have one or know anything about them, I highly recommend you do a little research, check it out. They're amazing. Um, additionally, we used my Sigma 18 to 35 f 1.8 um, for the wide shots um, for her bedroom and for these scenes in the kitchen. And then finally, we used um, a Canon 100 macro, and that was only for about 5% of the video. It was really just for more so like detail shots, um, but that's pretty much what we use camera and lens wise. Lighting wise, we used the Falcon Eyes F7 and my Aperture 300D Mark II and the Light Dome. That's really it when it came to lighting. The rest was natural, bouncing, various things like that. And this was all shot at 4K at 23.98, um, except for a couple shots we did shoot in 60 FPS, just so we had some nice slow motion for some of those B-roll shots. Now, without further ado, let's dive into the various kind of locations slash scenes. So scene one I want to break down here for you guys is the robbery scene. This was all shot with natural light. Now, we could have brought some light in there. You know, we, originally when we showed up on set, we kind of explored the idea of, of some bouncing. So bouncing off the ceilings, so we kind of just fill the space and give it some more light. But at the end of the day, I decided to roll with all natural and for a couple reasons. One, we've got the Ursa Mini Pro G2, so 15 stops the dynamic range, which is fantastic. So knowing that, plus the camera shoots at a native ISO of 800. So knowing those two details, plus the fact that my lens goes to f2.8, I knew that I would have more than enough ambient light coming through the windows. But you know, my main kind of discussion or issue was, do I wanna bounce so I have a little more fill so the shadows aren't so dark? At the end of the day, I decided to go with all natural look because what are we going for here, guys, right? Again, be intentional. Think about the mood, the energy, the scene you're trying to create. This is a robbery. This is not supposed to feel like a high key, beautifully lit scene. It should feel dark. It should feel edgy. It, it should feel grungy. The camera should be shaking and waddling. You know, there should be some green tint to it. We want it to feel muy oscuro. You know, <laughs> when you're lighting guys, you want to keep all these various things in mind. So again, for me and this scene specifically, you know, we went with the natural light look because it reflected the mood and the energy we wanted the audience to feel. We wanted you as a viewer to feel while watching this. Now, after we shot at location one in this specific scene, the rest was at location two um, at Shani's apartment. Now looking at scene two, bedroom scene here, guys, we did a two camera setup. So camera A, we had the pocket 4K. Now that is locked on facing straight at Shawnee. And my whole point and purpose behind that is I knew I wanted to use that for a nice and just really cinematic push in. I didn't wanna, I wanted to emulate a dolly effect, but I didn't wanna actually push in and come towards her. Again, I'm shooting this alone. I don't have a second camera operator. So I was working within my limitations, but I wanted to create something that's really unique, captivating, cinematic, in a way that we can create multiple shots 
out of one scene, one location, and just run a more efficient set. So we put the Pocket 4K on a tripod, locked it there, and again, gave it a little bit wider look and a little bit more headspace, So because again, I knew I was going to push in and post. Now, as for camera B, for that specific uh, scene and setup, we used the Ursa Mini Pro G2 um, with the camera on 24 to 70 and the Black Pro Mist. Use this as the cutaway camera um, and just a really nice, more intimate close up, right? So we're getting more detail, more information. Additionally, we used a Falconize F7. So that is just off frame. And I had that with a, a blue uh, tint color to it. So we had Aperture 300D Mark II with the light dome. Um, Diffusion in the light dome, of course, and honeycomb grid as well to kind of shape, control the light a little more so it wasn't spilling everywhere. So we had that set up um, at about a 45, you know, going for a nice Rembrandt light look. Then additionally to match that daylight balance, but to give it more of a blue light tint. Um, so again, kind of emulating its moonlight, it's, it's late at night, she's alone in her room, kind of just going through her thoughts by herself. Uh, and so we added that Falcon Eyes F7 with a blue tint to it, um, placed it just outside of frame of a cam. And so that way, again, we kind of had this really moody, nice blue color that complements the practical that was in the scene. So you're also seeing in this, the practical, this was her tungsten lamp. Loved having that so we could have this beautiful complementary colors of blue and orange. Additionally, I want to briefly mention, I did use the Mars X by Hollyland. It's a brand new unit for wireless transmission they're pushing out and promoting. Most of the time I use my Hollyland Mars 400S, which allows you to connect to a wireless monitor as well as Android and iOS devices. The big difference between that and the Mars X is the Mars X is simply a transmitter. It doesn't come with a receiver. It transmits the signal and you capture and connect it through your phone. And you can have up to three different wireless devices connected to it great unit to use and what I really love about having that is I was able to connect it to my pocket 4k so then I could watch the image on display on my iPad and have that right by me so I can peer over and know when I'm getting into the frame of the shot with that B cam while I'm operating that and going for more of that handheld movement with uh, you know just a little bit of that sexy glide in the air so having that was super super beneficial because the Pocket 4K doesn't have a flip screen. And even with the flip screen, I mean, maybe it'd be this big, four or five inches. I can't see that from across the room. So being able to put it on display on my iPad, have it right there for me to view, was such a big help. It allowed me, again, to be vastly more efficient on set. We were able to get two shots in one performance take set, right? So we did two performance take sets and we had four different takes to pull from, two from camera A, two from camera B, more than enough footage, boom, we're out of that room. So that was the whole setup for scene look two. Scene look three, this is gonna cover a couple different things here. So gonna cover um, essentially here when she's sitting down just outside of the kitchen, kind of in the, the living room space, and then she's also in the kitchen. Now I'm gonna talk about these the same because the lighting setup is essentially the same. So we're using um, the Falcon Eyes F7. We have again on a blue highlight, and we're throwing that for a nice top down look. So kind of taking place like it is the fluorescent lights that she has naturally at the, the, the ceiling of her building. Um, so we're kind of just, again, using it as a form of a practical. She had a beautiful practical, a nice tall lamp. So I wanted that on, again, keeping with the flow and continuity of the colors. So we have blue and orange, very complementary to each other. And so we left that lamp on and in the scene. And for the part where she is, the phone is going off. Love it. Hopefully it's a business. No, not business. Okay, maybe next time. So we had those complimentary colors and for this particular scene where she's just outside of the kitchen in the living room, we use the Aperture 300D with the light dome honeycomb grid. And again, put that about a 45 so we have a nice Rembrandt light look there. Um, just giving her some more light because the only other light we had in the house would have been ceiling practicals, which ugh, don't get started, so ugly. And we had natural light coming through the doorway, but it was just way too far away. So we used that for um, just some more light push um, for better key light. And again, we've got the blue light in the kitchen and the, the orange practical in the background. So we've, we've got the color scheme there. Lighting the space, right? We have this kind of more so wide shot. We're seeing them in the background, her in the forefront. 
and then specifically the scenes with her in the kitchen talking to her brother the exact same thing the only thing is we moved the light dome from being by her and kind of in that living room space to right in front of her door and shooting up towards them as a, as a nice soft key light uh, in the kitchen space um, and, and so again you know we did that with a two cam setup camera a and camera b literally the exact same thing guys we used the mars x with my ipad um, connected the mars x to my pocket 4k so while that was sitting on a tripod shooting this way capturing um you know everything that's going on in the kitchen area i'm filming this way capturing her doing her performance take um, from the living room space and i'm having the ipad right by me so literally as i'm shooting i can peer down and say oh i'm in frame Oh, I'm not in frame, I'm good, I'm clean. Again, just helps me run a more efficient and effective set and allows me to really trust and rely on myself uh, a lot, lot more. So Mars X has been extremely beneficial in making sure uh, I got this production done effectively in an eight hour period being uh, you know, the director and the cinematographer. Scene four, so this is kind of the, the corpse scene or the dead body or, or dying body scene. You know, I'll leave that up to y'all to decide you know, if he's dead or if he's dying. Um, make sure this stuff don't turn off. I hate the, the monitor laggy thing. This is so, so similar to, to scene um, three. The only really difference here, guys, is we took the key light out. Didn't want the key. Um, I wanted this to feel, again, much more moody, dark, gritty. Um, I wanted you to feel upsetting. I wanted you to almost have to sit in closer just to see what's actually going on. So we got rid of the, the key light with the Aperture 300D and we used the Falcon Eyes F7 for that blue hue, um, nice top down look. Um, that gave us pretty good light, but I wanted to stick with the color scheme, right? And that practical that was originally in there, the lamp was just way too tall, way too big. So what I did is I went into a room, grabbed that original practical, that lamp, brought it in so it was right at eye level with her while she's sitting on the floor holding her brother. So it worked out just great. You know, it's right at eye level, kind of right there with her face. So I put it just outside of frame. And so we've got from this one side, this nice, beautiful warm light coming in and from this other, this cool blue. And so very complimentary, very cinematic cool cool look really loved it um and we used some fake blood threw some fake blood on on her brother and all over her shirt and on some of his skin so again it allows us to kind of really showcase that scene and just sell the idea that you know he was just shot um a bit more although we, we just used water guns he's fine he's totally good and that's really it guys that's that's how we lit all the scenes hope you guys enjoyed this has been exciting and fun for me it's been a minute since i jumped back and did a tutorial so Happy to get back here and again, share my knowledge with y'all um, and happy to do a cinematography breakdown. I freaking love, I love doing these, just like really working through and explaining my process. I hope you guys enjoy this as much as I do. I wonder if I get too much pleasure out of this. It's fun to, to work again through, through my thought process and be like, wow, you're not an idiot, Kyle. Sometimes you, you're actually kind of smart. All right, y'all, that's it for this week's episode. Hope you enjoyed. I am Kyle Loftus, AKA Cal Visuals. And I'm signing out.